G'day and welcome back to the Gatekeepers coverage of the 2023 ACT Disc Golf Championships. The Sizzler, presented by Oz Discs. We are at the beautiful Western Park in the capital city of Australia, Canberra. And this coverage has been provided by Justice Media. I'm Andrew Ferguson. I'm joined with Paddy Robinson and Tim Bowen from Australia's podcast, The Tee Off. Hey, boys. Stoked to be here, boys. Beautiful Western Park. Massive course uh, in the heart of Canberra. And looking at the leaderboard, who's winning, Paddy? So we've got Austin on a 10 down, Dave Perry 9, Luke on 7, and Tim, you there at a 1 down. We're getting into the final nine of this beautiful 27-hole layout. Hole 19, 176 metres, 577 foot, par 4. Toughest hole on the, bo- on the course, boys? Yep. Right, so Toughy, this one. Lots of trees, lots of OB. Lots of cars. <laughs> yeah, lots of cars. <laughs> so off the tee, you kind of just want to miss the trees. You throw a backhand or a forehand, just want to try and get about 100 metres of distance. Bainey looks like he's done just about that. He may have been caught up in the very last uh, bushy trees, I think. Yeah, he'll be he'll be in a great spot there, though. Um, should have a really open look at the basket. Tim, I reckon you've done the exact same there, mate. That is a good spot. You just don't want to be in any of those trees early. Dave opting for the backhand and... Oh, boy. F- was probably lucky to get away with that, to be honest. He almost clipped that one of the first available there. Yeah, he made a clip the third available, so it's going to be tricky. <laughs> Massive hyzer flip there from Austin. Wow. Go. What was that? That, I believe, was a TD. An old school Dismania TD. Very flippy. T- is that like a jackal? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> very Something very flippy. Goodness gracious. Yeah, he had, he had some angle on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so he's opting for the flex forehand there. Looks like he needed more flex. See the basket just out of focus there. He's going to be short right. He looks probably about uh, maybe at circle's edge. Tim, you've got this big tree to contend with. Yeah, and I yeah, punch through the tree, but uh, very disappointed to miss that gap. Bainey's showing it off here. Oh, that, yeah. How's that for a position, too? Yeah. That's lined up perfectly. And uh, if that checked up, it'll be inbounds, and he'll have a look for birdie. Dave with a quite a straightforward backhand here, and... That yeah. thing's... Oh, I think that, that was uh, that was going to be out of bounds. Wasn't yeah, it? that is the OB line on those bollards. So, Tim, you've got a pretty straightforward up and down, maybe a bit yeah. of a bit there. Have to loft it up just because the OB comes into play very quickly behind the basket. Well, Bainey's disc checked up nicely and he's had a putt for Bird. A bit low, unfortunately. Dave with his par save here. Yeah, he's had a bit of work to do from his upshots so far, Dave. But uh, luckily, oh. well, not luckily, he's a bloody good putter. So, well done. Austin, jeez. Oh, now he's actually canning the lone birdie from the MPO field on this hole. So shout out to Aussie D getting the birdie on hole 19. All right, next up, hole 20. This is a 115 metre, 377 foot par three. A uh, bit of downhill to work with here and a bit of trees on the right hand side that can get caught, disc caught up. Um, if you somehow manage to go too far left, there is OB there, but it doesn't really come into play or shouldn't for these MPO boys. That was way too low from Aussie D. Absolute daisy cutter, and he's going to have about 60 metres to, to get his par. I ain't putting that one in the air a little bit more. and Absolute textbook. Getting out of the way of this enough. drive. That's it. <laughs> Done a bit of a look away there. He just knew it was so good. I'm going the backhand Thunderbird. I've got pretty good shape on that. It, it needs to hit the pin, though, because I'm going a little bit left. But no, very happy with that drive. There's no forehand line on this one, boys, so <laughs> had to throw the back end. Dave with the, uh, looks like the Thunderbird again. Yep, following suit. Well, Austin got down a fair bit further than I thought. Yeah, it was very low out of the hand, but it is downhill, I guess, so he got over the crest a little bit. Dave, Dave. with a long look here, outside circle for two. Oh, just hitting the rim. I don't know about you boys, but the trays on these baskets look very small. <laughs> yeah, a bit disappointed not to Yo. put that one close. Ooh. <laughs> Bainey. He knows he got away with one there, but take the birdie, walk away. Well done, Bainey. And the three of us just uh, tapping in our par. Disappointing on that hole because it's a good chance for a birdie. Moving over to hole 21. This is a par four, 182 metres. You do want to crush one off the hill, uh, off the tee, and land somewhere near these bollards because then you're carrying across an OB section uh, to this island green. And the OB section is playing as a hazard. So you do get to progress. 
Um, but you want to make that island, otherwise you're taking a penalty stroke. Pretty safe tee shot. There's no real obstacles. You just want to make sure you get the distance right. Ideally, you're going as long as you can and getting up close to that OB line. Some great camera work there from uh, from Justice. It's a great throw, actually, throwing towards the... What is that? The, uh, the radio tower or... I don't know. It's a Con- big spire in Canberra. Pretty iconic. And it's a good thing to aim at on this hole. I think I've got a postcard with that on it. <laughs> from the 80s. Oh, yeah. I'm cranking my XCAL out there and I feel like that's got pretty good weight. But you won't know until you get up there and have a look because it is over this little crest. It is pretty hard to get uh, too far along on this even for these big arms. So, you just don't want to go too far left. There is that road OB, but there's a Mando pole straight up and down that could potentially cut your shot off to the green. So definitely a scary shot, this one. You do want to stick the island. It's a pretty sizable island, and uh, Austin's put it very close there. Was that a bullseye hit? It looked pretty close. So this one, I'm hanging it out wide. It looks like it's getting inbound, so I'm pretty relieved. Happy to see that one. Hit the uh, island. Back-to-back backhands from Timmy Bowen. Look out. That's it. <laughs> and you got a chance at a birdie, mate. Throw more backhands. <laughs> I like to throw the forehands, Paddy, because it puts me close. I don't have to putt. <laughs> so Perry's hanging that out wide. Has it got the fade? It's got to get over. Very oh, nicely lovely. does. Just snuck it onto the island. It is a very generous island. Let's it is be a honest. generous island. You do uh, you do feel bad when you miss it though, and this hole gets a lot of wind, so it can be very very scary. Looks like the wind was down for this. And, Pe- and Perry, just an absolute robot. A KC Pro Avia. He hasn't been putting it very, yeah, He hasn't been putting them very close. He's just been canning all the putts. Yeah, Austin, a bit longer than I thought. Edge of circle. Shouldn't worry him too much. He's just hit Could the band be. there. And this hole played at 3.94 for the first round. Oh, oh great putt. <laughs> snuck Bainey. it over. I'm just outside circle here. And never hit the tray. Mm. I'm feeling pretty flat at this point. I've hit a lot of metal. Austin, too. Moving on to hole 22, 95 metre par 3 playing downhill. Uh, looks like the uh, the old backhand spike hyzer is on play, boys. That absolutely is a play. And shout out to, I believe, James Meeting has got the ace on this one. Very cool ace to spike in. Yeah, this hole has actually been cleaned up quite a lot. I remember we used to actually have to throw through these random little branches on these two guardian trees here. But uh, now it has opened up quite a lot and just leaves you a, a nice uh, backhand approach. The only issue with the backhand is it does fade left of the pin and then you've got a bit of a, a riskier putt. It's a cool hole design, actually, to give you that. Yeah. I have seen some guys uh, throw a putter straight at it. Well, I actually opt for the fourth circle tie pin forehand line because I know, strange play, but this uh, tie pin, I know it's not going to skip and I like to putt uphill at the pin. So I hang it out to the left, hoping to knife in. And Jeez, look. mate. Any opportunity you get to throw a <laughs> forehand, eh? The tie pin's great, mate. No skip. Bainey here from just outside the circle, is he? Might have been just in, but yeah, great. Oh, he loves it. Great birdie by uh, Lukey Bain. It seals him the turkey there, actually. And no, about my 12th tray hit. Just looking at the disc there, Tim. I, I can't, I, like 5% confidence at this point. And uh, Dave Perry, he's he's running hot. I don't think he's missed a putt yet. Well, he's definitely worked that uh, double bogey back out now. <laughs> <laughs> again, those RPM pass could still wonders for Mr. Austin. <laughs> hole 23, easy one here again. This is uh, the forehand hole that I've been looking for. It took, took to hole 23, but we got there. 76 metres, just want to hang it out there and uh, knife it in right and nice and close to the pin. You do not want to get in these trees, though. They are savage yep. uh, once you get down into them. And somehow, your disc loves to find all that savagery, so... 
Best to keep it right up and high like David Perry's done here and just fade straight back to that pin. That will be putting for sure. Yeah, wide is the play. Bainey, that was a huge mistake from him because it's a really easy forehand. And if you're in that uh, tree on the right, you've got absolutely no look. And his disc was tracking for the water. You can see the water just on my right-hand side there. Tim, you, you must be just... Licking your chops at this hole, mate. Mate, 100%. It's one of those ones where you go, if I stuff this one up, I'll be very disappointed with myself. Looks like I've done exactly that too. I'm over there with Lukey Bain. Very disappointing. So you can oh, see here, there's absolutely yeah. nothing in this tree. I'm surprised you even had that look. I, yeah. I was in there as well and had nothing. Bainey on two knees, doing his best to pitch out. You can just see the basket up there. It's not too far, but yeah, not much of a chance to take a bird. Austin, a little bit long here, but he'll uh, have a pretty good look at it. Lovely. This putting's been on, Austin. 13 downs, very hot at this point. Here's another man. He's had the hot putter, and he's just hit the band. You know, there's not much band on these baskets, but it's surprising how often they get hit. Now, this played at 2.41 over the weekend, and uh, 10 birdies on this round, including myself. Now, hole 24, uh, big par 5, 267 metres, 876 feet. Uh, first drive, you can play down to this landing zone here. Another big hyzer will spin you around to sort of follow the bank of the lake. And then the basket sits right on the water. You've only got about three metres behind there. Uh, <laughs> and then you are probably wet. So really fun par five this. Really enjoy it. You can go up high to the left as Austin might be doing here. But uh, yeah, there's a few ways you can attack this hole. Yeah, Austin's gone a little long there. I think he, ideally he wants to turn that over and fa and turn to the right. Lukey Bain's gone for the uh, overstable approach and that looks like it's in the perfect landing zone. Absolute textbook from Luke there. He'll have a great look at the second shot there. Dave looking like he's going mid-range here, and that that gets a little bit stable on him. Yep, mid-range is a good play, because if you pull up short, you can go the spike hyzer, and that's exactly what I've gone for. Just a justice off the tee, pull up short, and it gives you the uh, angle to throw a spike hyzer over these trees. Yeah, not the longest of par fives, but there is a lot of trouble to get into. Um, these trees that sort of guard the lake as well um, <laughs> are pretty hungry. Yep. They like to gobble discs. Oh, you might have missed it there, Paddy. I threw a pretty nice spike hyzer. You did, you mate. Back end. I didn't miss a thing there, mate. <laughs> Fantastic. Perry's aiming at the spire, which is a good uh, play, good point to to angle yourself for this hole. So I think all of these second shots have been pretty good so far. Looks like Bane is getting swarmed by bugs there. Oh, Austin. So there's no mandos on this hole. You can uh, fight your way through the forest. It's not ideal. But he's uh, looks like he's throwing a very good shot here. Just got to hope it gets down before it gets in the water. He has no idea. Yeah, it does kind of go uphill and then straight down uh, to the water. So that will be a risky shot. Mm -hmm. Tim, Tim, nice little approach here from you. Something stable. Yeah, that's my uh, DD verdict. And it looks like I might have got on the sand there. So I've got to look at it. Lukey Bain with the Toro. He's in of a sponsored and uh, he's very, very good with his Toro. Some pretty straightforward touchy-up shots here. Dave Perry, that looked very long out of his hands, and we couldn't tell if that was a, little, a bit of water that we saw splash up. I think he may have just checked up inbounds. Oh, Austin. Austin. Huge, huge birdie putt there. From being that far out of position, that, that uh, third shot was insane. Yeah, I think he threw two bad shots and then had a cracking shot and a good putt, and you can see Dave really taking on that water, but that's the putt you want away from the water. He's, he's a good birdie. My verdict's got pretty close. Oh. Is this another star frame? I think that is another star frame. Good one to get. This is uh, one of the more uh, challenging holes on the course. Check yeah. those chains, boys. Rattle them. <laughs> Give it a rattle. Moving on to hole 25, 112 metre par 3. OB path there on the left-hand side. A basket. Just nicely placed back in this group of trees. Austin, probably an FD. I think that's his putter, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big putter shot, yes, but well done by Austin. I think this is the play of the forehand, but uh, 
it is a max distance forehand shot, and you do see this a lot, people turning it over too much, trying to get that extra distance, and he's very lucky to hit that tree and stay inbounds. He's a man who's not short of forehand distance. He can just throw, they've got the luxury of throwing the flat hyzer shot. Oh, Done that well. Just inside that tree too, he'll be oh, maybe six, seven metres from the basket. Tim here lining up with the uh, tie pan again. Fourth circles. That's it. There was a bit of a headwind on this hole, and I'm surprised to see my tie pan turn over that much because uh, it's a very overstable disc. Looks like he had a good distance on it, though, but pin high, just too far left. I think I'm over here with, with Bainey. Bit yeah. of a uh, long look at it. Well, we're going to give it a little run here, Tim, maybe? Yeah, give it a little bit of a lofty bid with me uh, with my AVR X3. Yep. Yeah, Perry, as I said, about that six metres left. Yeah. Okay. We'll take it. He's done He's re- done really well. Oh, Austin, jeez. Absolutely parked. Well done. These scores of uh, 11, 13, and 15 down are very hot scores. I'm obviously throwing a more human score at just two down. I right. like human, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hole 26, par 3, 100 metres, 328 feet. It uh, doesn't look too hard off the actual tee, but we are dealing with a little bit of elevation and you do have to control this backhand to get something to pop up and go quite straight. It's very, very tight, this one. You can see all the marks on the trees on the left-hand side there. And there's lots of places near the green where you can't putt from because it's just leaves and low you know, bushes that you're going to land in. This uh, hole played exactly to par. Yeah, probably sees a lot of, oh, very fortuitous kick from Bainey there. Little air bounce off the branch. Mm. I don't mind the forehand play here, Tim, because if you once you navigate this gap and if you fade out a bit to the right, it does get very, very open. But that looks fantastic. Yeah, look, I my play on this one is just to get an edge of circle or slightly outside circle putt. I figure the backhand is just such a risk off the tee because it's a low ceiling, there's trees everywhere. And even if you pull it off, you're likely to fade into these trees like uh, these boys that are showing you on their knees. Shout-outs to the uh, four birdies on this hole for the weekend. Jade Brady and Rowan Hosking, locals. Yep. Leith Brody and Pele Carlson. Brother of Lena. So I guess that means Tim misses his putt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wouldn't be a circle two putt for me without hitting the tray. Very happy to, to ring one up. Not my favourite, these trays, after hitting them 20 times in this round. <laughs> Your wine glass. Mm-hmm. Moving on, hole 27, the last hole of the round. It's a par four to finish and it's a ripper. Off the tee, you can throw whatever you like. It's a uh, backhand crush or you can actually go the roller. You can see here, not a lot of bad landing shots for the second uh, second shot. So you just want to get some distance. Austin's going the roller. That is a very flippy disc. He got that out quite flat. Ideally, it cuts, which it is doing nicely there. And he just caught a late tree, but that's... He got plenty of distance off that. Is a little bit of OB on this hole, but it doesn't, you know, the straight long is uh, the car park there, but it doesn't really come into play. And then you do have a road to your left. But again, I don't think it's really going to impact these boys that much. Bainey got uh, caught up on the first tree that you're trying to flex around. I'm going the forehand roller. Not sure why. I don't think I ever practiced this. Why not do it then, hey? It got a little bit vertical, a little bit quick. So that's going to uh, wrap up a little bit early. 65 bird, Tim. Sexton Firebird, What year yep. was that one? 2019. It's been in the bag since 2019. Oof. Very, very reliable disc for me. Oh, that's a nice shave from Luke. Mm. Just unfortunately nicks that tree there. He should be left with about 25, 30 metres. And that is not what you want to see. Hitting the tree 10 metres in front of your face. Ideally, throwing the roller gets you past these trees, but obviously it didn't work out for me. Dave. Perry almost geez, throwing geez. it in. Cracking shot. A little run there. So playing the skipper around this last guardian tree, and I think I've done that pretty well. It's wrapped up around the pole. Austin, well, this is great distance on the roller. Imagine if it didn't hit that tree. Mm. It would have been almost putting. Oh, that was so ultimate. <laughs> he's throwing, Very he's smooth. Just throwing under his opponent's arms there, I think. <laughs> oh, Luke's given that a bit of a bid, I reckon. Yep, he'll be disappointed to get a par on this one. He's got definitely got the tool set to get a birdie. Speaking of, oh, Dave Perry, 
I reckon that might have been one of the only putts he missed for the round. Very, very strong performance. Lukey Bain in for the par. Austin in for the birdie, taking him to a huge 16 down through 27, making his local course look very, very easy. Putting in another par, so is Dave. All right, that brings us to the end of round one. Austin is in the lead with a 16 under. Perry second is the 13 under. Luke Bain sitting third with 11. And Tim, you're there with a two under. Um, that's uh, rounded out. Jade Brady there with a 13 under as well. He'll make the lead card. Dan Frost with a nice nine. Myself at an eight. Yeah, Austin's definitely taking command and lean there. That's it. A lot of locals on the leaderboard there. And uh, make sure you join us for round two to see who takes it out. Thank you to Gatekeeper and Justice for the coverage.